In this video, we'll be going over what are stem cells and what is differentiation. So I'm showing you a picture here. So right in the center, you see there's a cell. Now this cell here is called a stem cell. Now these cells, they have not become anything. So they have not yet specialized. There's two words. We can say specialized or we can say differentiated. What do they, uh, how are they different? There's no difference. They're exactly the same word. So you can use in the exam specialized or differentiation. So this, this stem cell here has not become anything. So what do we call it? Unspecialized or undifferentiated. So a cell that has not become specialized, we can say is undifferentiated. So this cell can differentiate, can become a muscle cell if the body needs that. It can become a white blood cell, let's say you are unwell, it can become an epithelial cell, it can replace the nerve cells, it can make more, it can become a red blood cell, let's say you were anemic or you had blood loss, it can form new bones, new bone cells, or it can become more new fat cells. So the cell that has not yet become something, we call it a stem cell, which is undifferentiated cell. And that cell that has specialized, we call them specialized cell or differentiated cell. So you need to know some of those cells that have become differentiated, that have become something. Could be a nerve cell, could be a muscle cell. And you need to know how they are adapted for their job. So differentiation is the process by which a cell changes to become specialized for its particular job. You need to get this down and learn by memory for your exam. So this is a cell here. This cell is a stem cell and then it's going to become a nerve cell. So that process it goes through, that journey it goes through is called differentiation. It's the process by which a cell changes to become a specialized cell for its job. So pause the video and write this down. Okay, so our first cell that we'll be going over is a sperm cell. So we know a sperm cell is used, this is a sperm cell, there are many sperm cells, but one of the sperm cells is used to fertilize an egg. So we need to know about sperm cell. So sperm cell obviously contains the male DNA. Now sperm cell is streamlined, okay, and it's got a long tail. So these two helps the sperm cell to swim, to fertilize the egg. Now you probably have a realizing that a sperm cell has lots and lots of mitochondria. The reason why they have that is to provide energy for it to start swimming and to fertilize the egg. To, to start swimming is movement and that requires energy and that comes from mitochondria which obviously in there you have your respiration taking place to provide energy. Now at the head of the sperm that carries lots of enzymes. So when that sperm cell reaches the egg cell there, it has to break down, it has to digest this cell membrane. So the head carries enzyme and that enzyme breaks down, digests that uh, cell membrane so it can fertilize this egg. We'll now move on to nerve cell. So nerve cells are specialized. So these cells, they are unique, they are specialized. What's their job for rapid signaling? So I'm showing you a person, they accidentally touch something hot. And what happens when you touch something hot? You remove your hand without thinking very fast. So what's working? It's the nerve cell. They're, they are required for rapid signaling. So what do they have? for us to do rapid signaling. So nerve cell, they are very long because so therefore it can carry, it can cover all the body distance. That's the first thing. Number two, as you can see, nerve cells have lots of branches and those branches, what they do, there's two things. Number one, they can communicate with the other nerve cell. And number two, around the whole body, they form a network of nerve cells called the nervous system. So these are the main two points of the adaptive feature. Now let's go into plants. So we have two uh, cells that we need to know, uh, xylem and phloem. So xylem is here. So xylem is designed to transport water. So when you water the plant into the soil, the, obviously the root hair cell absorbs that water. Now that water 
Okay, believe it or not, it goes up the plant against gravity and it goes through xylem. So xylem, we need to know, it transports only water. So what does it have? Xylem, obviously it wants to carry water. So that tube, do you want it full or do you want it empty? It's carrying water. Do you want obstruction or not? So it's a hollow cell. So the center is hollow. Hollow means it's empty. And why is that important? Because it's hollow, it can... Um, it's easier to transport the water, to flow the water up. Um, second thing is, xylem has a stuck cell that are stuck end to end. So the cells, they are stuck end to end, so to form a tube. So these, that tube here is made from lots of cells. And how are they formed? So how the cell forms, how can a cell form a tube? Is because they are stuck once one end of a cell stuck to the other end of the cell and that's how it forms a tube now that point here is important and it's so easy to understand because that same point applies to the phloem phloem are also stuck they are stuck end to end to form tube so you can mention the same point for as adaptive feature anyway let's go into phloem phloem transports the food so the sugar so in your plant your plant uh, your, the leaf cells they do photosynthesis and what do they make as a food it's the glucose right so that glucose gets transported around the whole plant through which tube not xylem xylem is for water through phloem so the phloem obviously has cells in it the cells forms a tube but inside the cells, we know a cell has mitochondria, a cell has vacuole, a cell has a ribosome, a cell has chloroplast. So you don't want so much things inside a cell because it's going to cause obstruction. You want that food, that sugar, to move up and down with ease, with less obstruction. I mean, our xylem had no obstruction because it was fully empty, it's hollow. Our phloem, we want it to be empty, but it's not empty. But we have less things in it. So there's a less subcellular structures inside it. It's quite it's empty-ish, you're going to say. So therefore, it allows more food to go through it. I'm showing you our muscle. We have different types of muscle. So our heart muscle is here. This is our smooth muscle found around the blood vessels. Our skeletal muscle are, are attached to our bones. So muscles, what's the adaptive feature? What's the function of muscle? What's the main job of the muscle? Is to contract. I'm showing you a muscle here. That muscle is relaxed. And when it contracts, look what happens. It becomes shorter. So the main job of a muscle is to contract quickly. Contracting quickly. That contraction requires energy. So your mitochondria, as you can see, these are all uh, the, the, your muscles. These are all mitochondria. In your muscle, you have lots of mitochondria. And you probably have guessed it why. Because you are always in contraction and that contraction is not free. It requires energy. And the energy comes from respiration happening inside mitochondria. Also, your muscles um, are long. So they can, so therefore, it can contract uh, and become shorter. The last thing we're going to go over is back to plants. Is going to be our root hair cells. Now, our root hair cells are obviously found in the root. So... As you can see here, there is no chloroplast because down in, inside the ground, there's no light reaching there. So why would you need chloroplast? What's the function of chloroplast? For photosynthesis. You have to have light for photosynthesis. If I have chloroplast there, it will be a waste of time because it have no function to it. So your root hair cell, it, ad it absorbs water through osmosis. And it absorbs mineral ions, such as nitrates. So mineral ions is a general word. The specific mineral which we need to know is nitrates. This, this is nitrates is a mineral ion. That will be absorbed by the root hair cell through active transport. Because the plant needs, needs lots of mineral ions to grow. Now... Why does, why does a root hair cell have lots of mitochondria? It is because to provide energy to absorb those mineral ions via active transport, to absorb that nitrate. And number two, the root hair cell have a long, thin projection. And this allows you to increase the surface area. 
And if you increase the surface area, you do two things. You absorb more water and more mineral ions.